All right, we got a little more backstory and a lot more sex. Let's talk about this Claimer episode three. Hey everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass. And I'm going to talk to you about Disclaimer Season 1, Episode 3, 3, Roman 3. It's coming to Apple TV Plus on October 18th, 2024. It is the third episode in the Disclaimer miniseries. I believe there's seven, so we are getting close to about halfway there. Uh, this story gives us a little bit more backstory, gives us some more information on what happened. Should you watch it? My hot take is yes, I definitely think you should. It is another solid episode this season this series has been really really good so far uh this is no exception it has a phenomenal cast great music uh, a lot more backstory and also a really nice contrast between like some of the incidents that happen so i definitely think you should check it out if you haven't seen disclaimer yet you should watch disclaimer it's really good and it's just getting started so you can catch up now so you can see the next four episodes in this mini series so I'm going to tell you a little about the episode, a few things I like, a few things I didn't like. Really quickly go into a recap. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the recap section. If you don't want to know what happens in this episode, I would turn it off when I get there. Before that, though, I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler free. Let's try to get to those spoilers. So episode three continues after the events of episode two. We get the meeting of Jonathan and Catherine in the past, where Jonathan met Catherine and her son Nicholas when they were both in Italy. That was kind of the, the final moment of episode two. Episode three we continue along that story. We get some more backstory into how these two met, how their uh, you know romance started, and also what happened after uh, after Jonathan's accident. So, things I liked about this episode: the first, love the cast, still love the cast, fantastic cast. This is no exception. I mean, the core cast in this series is phenomenal, and uh, this time we also get to see uh, Leslie Manville come in as Nancy. We hadn't seen her before because she had been dead, and now we get some backstory, so we get to see her. And what she was like when she was alive. The second thing I loved, I love the music. It's really beautiful music. It's just such a small touch here, but it really contributes a lot to the overall series. Definitely ups the drama, definitely ups the uh, the romance. It is just a wonderful, wonderful addition to this. Uh, the third thing I love, I like getting more backstory. I was, I was interested in what happened. You got like glimpses here and there, but it's interesting to finally see like actual things that happened in the past to help understand where this story is going to be going and the last thing i loved i love the contrast you've got some really great contrast especially with like catherine and jonathan's meetings and their you know budding relationship with some of the things that happen after when the family finds out you, got, you know just a nice kind of contrast of like bright beautiful scenes and very dark scenes and, and the contrast of like the past this like beautiful picturesque italian landscape with like the present where it's a lot more dreary they're in england they're in london i think and so you get that contrast as well so all that being said, there really wasn't much I didn't like about this episode. I think it kind of dwelled on the relationship a lot longer, but it's important. It's important for the story. So um, overall, I like this episode a lot. I thought it was really, really well done. So I definitely think you should check out Disclaimer Episode 3. If you haven't seen Disclaimer yet, go back and watch 1 and 2 and 3. It is a good series, and it's only getting better. So I'm going to really quickly go into a recap. So if you don't know what happens in this episode, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. Uh, now, so this this series kind of jumps between different groups of people. I'm just going to start in the present and then go to the past because the past is where a lot of the meat happens. So in the present, you know, you got Robert and Catherine uh, at the end of episode two. Robert discovered the pictures that Stephen had sent to him, had left him in his office. He discovered the pictures of a Catherine, a young Catherine, very much in the throes of passion, uh, presumably taken by Jonathan. And so... He finds these, he gets upset about at his wife and leaves. Um, so in, in at the start of this, he has left, he is driving, he decides he ends up like sleeping in his car, drinking himself to sleep, and looking at the pictures of young Catherine. Now, Catherine is trying to figure out what Stephen wants from her, and she thinks she might have figured it out. So she calls Stephen and like anonymously but says, like, hey, I read your book. I thought it was really interesting, a really fascinating work. I love the characters, I thought it was a great work of fiction. And then she's like, well, that was it. He must have just wanted some acknowledgement of uh, his story. That's not what he wants. He wants to destroy her. But Catherine, in her like strained world in her head, thinks maybe that's all he wants. That's clearly not what he wants. He wants to like destroy her life, just like she destroyed her his wife's life. So that was too little, too late. So Robert also finally sits down and re starts reading the book now that he knows that it is a true story that he knows that it is what happened with uh his wife and this kid jonathan years ago so he's going to start reading the book and probably have some really bad revelations now steven is not doesn't have a big role here but he does uh start keep 
putting his plan into motion. He goes to this bookshop owned by this person named Claire. He specifically wanted his book to be on display here. I assume that this bookshop is near where Catherine lives, uh, near where Catherine Robert lives. So he goes to visit there. The bookshop owner, Claire, is excited to see him. She loves the book. And she recommends that he does a reading, which I think will be a very fun scene later down where, uh, you know, Stephen is reading the book. And I assume Catherine will show up or maybe Robert will show up. Either way, it'll be very interesting. Now, on to the past. We'll start with uh, Catherine and Jonathan in the past. Again, they met on the beach. They spent the day together. He uh, carries uh, Nicholas back. He's asleep. So he carries Nicholas back to the hotel. And uh, Steve, Catherine and Jonathan have instant chemistry. She decides to put Nicholas to bed and then meets Jonathan for a drink. They meet up for a drink. Um, she mentions that she's kind of jealous of Jonathan's freedom of travel, that he can just go wherever he wants and sleep with whoever he wants. She is very sexually charged here. I feel like there is instant chemistry and she definitely sees something in Jonathan that she desires. I think it's the freedom. I think it's the youth. I think it's just kind of like getting rid of her responsibilities and doing something wild and passionate. And so she is definitely pushing Jonathan. And I love the contrast here because Jonathan was just this like horny kid when he was with Sasha. Uh, I guess, you know, maybe she was like a peer. He was familiar with her. He just always wanted to like be fun and have sex with her. With Catherine... He is so nervous. He is like unsure what to do. And she is just kind of like pushing him. I mean, you would say grooming if he was younger. He's not young. Uh, they're both fine of age, but she is definitely like molding him into what she wants. Now, after a sexually charged uh, drink, they she decides she invites him up to her room. She leaves her key and goes to the hotel to guest to get another key. He goes up and for some reason he knocks and like tries the door the key and she's there so i don't know why she left her key she could just be like hey come up in like five minutes but i don't know it's fine jonathan and her go in there they hook up uh she is definitely like directing everything he's doing uh for her pleasure and i, I assume his pleasure too but she is definitely using him for her own sexual pleasure and I don't know how Nicholas doesn't wake up. They are very loud, but Nicholas apparently sleeps like a rock. Now, later, they hook up again, and she is really kind of like training like training him, telling him exactly what to do, showing him what to do. And while they're having sex, uh, Nicholas wakes up, and he goes, Mommy, Mommy. And she's like, Oh, go to bed, go to bed. So Nicholas is awake while they're there. You don't get the sense that he heard anything, but I assume he probably hears some stuff. And so that could be an issue later. That could be maybe why... Jonathan ended up dead. We don't know. We'll find out later, but that is the Catherine and Jonathan story. Now, Stephen and Nancy, back in England, they find out that Jonathan died. Some police officers come while they are, you know, just having like a lovely Sunday barbecue. They tell them that Jonathan died. Nancy, uh, that, that he drowned in an accident and that they have to go to Italy to identify the body. Italian law requires them to identify the body in Italy. So they hear this. It ruins their day. It also ruins their stakes. Uh, Stephen had put on some really nice, like thick T-bone like steaks on uh, the grill. When this information happens, they are so devastated. They forget about the steaks. So not only is their son dead, their steaks are ruined. Horrible day. Now they fly to Italy. It's beautiful. It's lovely. It's sunny. And I love this contrast because they are in Italy. It's picturesque and they are just both completely downtrodden and sad and like emotionless. They go, they identify the body. Nancy is like beside herself. She's distraught. And um, one, some things that Stephen noticed is that uh, Jonathan's face isn't swollen, even though he drowned. And there's like a cross cut on his arm that they don't know what it is. The, the coroner just says, oh, it must have just been an injury before. I bet it's something. So they do identify the body. And then they go coll to collect Jonathan's belongings. He's staying at this just like dump of a place. He's, you know, he's a young kid. He, he doesn't care. He's just staying at whatever's cheapest. So... This place is awful. Um, Nancy there finds the film that uh, Jonathan had. I don't know if she finds the camera. We don't see her get the camera, but she finds the film and like secretly puts it in her purse. I don't know why she didn't tell Stephen that she found it, but uh, that is what happened. She gets the, the film, puts it in her purse. I assume maybe she wants to do her own investigation. And then they go to the accident location to the beach uh, where Jonathan died. They find out that he saved some child. Nancy finds out that the child's mother was there she's british uh her name is catherine and nancy instantly like wants to talk to her she, like wants to get more information she is very very keyed in on finding out as much as she can well catherine's already gone back to london so uh the police officer says she's not there and she, nancy's like why did you let her go back and like well i mean she wasn't a suspect why wouldn't they let her go back nancy is angry about this but then she decides to like take her grief to the ocean so i think she wants to find i think she wants to like 
be where her son died. So she runs to the water, takes off her shoes, and just like walks out into the water. Stephen, worried about his wife, follows her out. And then they just stay out there for a while as the waves crash up against them, just like in full grief. And that's the last scene of this episode. We see both of them out there in the water. Uh, you know, their their clothes are soaked from, from the water and they're just staying out there, like looking out into the horizon. So that's disclaimer. That's disclaimer episode three. What will happen next? Well, I assume we will find out more about what happened with uh, Jonathan and Catherine. Uh, I assume that they will become more daring and more kind of like uh, interesting in their sexual exploits. And I assume that will eventually lead to maybe Nicholas finding out about them. And that is maybe why Catherine killed him. I think that Catherine probably did kill him. That would be my guess, just from like a little cut on his arm that looks like some sort of incision. And the fact that he his like face wasn't blown, it seems like maybe he was dead before or maybe, uh, you know, she arranged his death. I assume to save herself to make sure that uh, he didn't tell her husband about what happened or maybe to like make sure that Nicholas didn't remember him. Something like that. Maybe Jonathan was like, I'll come find you in London. And she's like, no, no, like that's that's a very different life. And he was like obsessed. I don't know. Uh, we already know that Nancy did her own investigation. So I assume we'll see more about her investigation, how she found out more about Catherine and what happened and then how she wrote the book. And then Stephen's plan. I assume Stephen is going to read this book near Catherine and Robert's place and that uh, either Catherine or Robert will show up, someone will show up and it will be all sorts of fun and drama. So that's what I expect, uh, but you can check out Disclaimer. Season one, episode three comes out October 18th, 2024. Like I said, definitely watch it. Definitely get up on this train because it is so, so good and it's only going to get better. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.